Now, lastly, let's go through reliability. Reliability of results refers to the consistency of the results over multiple trials or repetitions. Something simple you can ask yourself when you're determining whether the results are reliable is, are your results reproducible? If you were to repeat the experiment one more time, how confident are you that you will achieve the same or similar results? If your answer is yes, I am confident, then the results are reliable. If you don't think you can get the same result again, then your results will be unreliable. Now, one key thing about assessing reliability is that if you only have one data point or one set of data, this is insufficient to assess and comment on whether the results are reliable because the one data point could be due to pure chance on luck. And if you were to repeat it again, you might get a completely different value. So to determine the consistency or the reliability of results, you must have multiple results. And to achieve multiple results, you must first conduct the experiment multiple times. And the general rule is it has to be done at least three times following the exact same steps under the same conditions. That's very important. If you repeat the experiment using slightly different steps in a method under slightly different conditions, you might arrive at results that are consistent or inconsistent. Either way, you cannot say that the results are reliable because they've done following slightly different procedures and under slightly different conditions. So when you're assessing reliability, the simple rule is if you have the same or similar values on data, the results will be considered as highly reliable. Most of the time you can eyeball whether the results are reliable, but reliability can be quantitatively assessed by using various statistical tests. Commonly, you can calculate the greatest deviation of a data point from the mean of the sample, or you could calculate the standard deviation of a set of data, or you could use z-scores from z-test. I won't explain these statistical tests in this video as they will be covered in their own separate videos. Let's go back to the examples we've used earlier in the video. In the experiment where I am calculating the mass loss in a soft drink can after heating, in order to determine the composition of carbon dioxide in a soft drink, I can repeat this experiment three times to arrive at an average value of 45 grams of mass change. Now, if we just eyeball the values of each of the trials, 45.0, 45.3, 40.8, we can say that these values are very, very similar to one another and they are not very far away or deviated from the average value. So I'd say that these results here are considered as reliable. Now let's look at a separate set of results. Let's just say I'm doing the same experiment and for some reason I've arrived at three different values, 55.0, 45.3 and 34.8. In this instance, even though the average value is exactly the same as before, which is 45.0 grams, if you look at each of the three values that was used to calculate the average, you will arrive at the conclusion that these values are further deviated away from the average value and they are far more inconsistent compared to the previous set of results. This set of results is an example of unreliable results. And that brings me to the point. When you're repeating the experiment and finding the average value, that does not mean you have reliable results you need to assess each individual value in a set of data with one another and compare whether that value is consistent or is it far away or close to the average value. In some experiments, you can also assess the reliability of your final results. This is usually applicable in an experiment where you're testing multiple independent variables. Let's go back to the physics experiment using the simple pendulum where we are using the period of oscillation to calculate the g-value or the force of gravity. In that experiment, for each of the length of string, I have repeated that three times. So trial one, trial two, trial three, and I've obtained the average value for each of the four lengths of string. So this is what we call the final results. Now, of course, if you look at three trials individually, these results compared to the average, they are fairly consistent and similar. 2.5, 2.5, 2.6, and the average is 2.5. For 1.4 meter length string, we have 2.7, 2.7, 2.7, and the average hit is item 2.7. So the individual sets of results are highly reliable. But what about the average value, which are my final results? When I plot this on a graph of period squared versus the length of pendulum, I can draw a line of best fit to represent the linear relationship between t squared and l. The reliability of final results refers to how consistently my data points, that is my average data points, point towards a general trend 
or relationship. Graphically, what this means is how close my four average values are to the line of best fit. If the four data points are collinear, that is on the straight line, then these are highly reliable because they all fit in the same trend. Now that's obviously the perfect case. In this case, you can see my four data points are still pretty close to the general line of best fit. So these results are still considered as highly reliable. A quantitative way in which you can use to assess the reliability of your results and how they fit towards the general trend is using the R squared value, which can be calculated using in Excel. The R squared value ranges between zero and one. A R squared value of zero means that the data points don't fit towards any general trend. So there's no correlation between the two variables on the graph. And a R squared value of one means that data points are completely collinear and perfectly on the same straight line. In this example, I have a R squared value of 0 0.9758, which is quite close to one. So these data points are highly reliable and they generally fit on the same linear relationship between T squared and length. Now, when speaking about reliability of results and how they fit towards a general trend, I want to emphasize that in cases where you have accurate results, which means the experimental data are close to the theoretical or accepted data, generally speaking, this implies that these results are also reliable. However, I want to make it clear that the converse is not true. Reliable results are not necessarily always accurate. And I'll speak more about this later on. So how do we improve reliability? Very commonly, students mistakenly think we can improve the reliability of results by simply repeating experiments. That's not true because if we repeat the experiment and have most multiple repetitions of data, but these data points are end up being inconsistent or very different to the average value, then despite repeating the experiment, I have obtained unreliable results. So when you're repeating the experiment multiple times, that's not to improve reliability, that's simply to help you obtain a way to assess reliability because the reliability results cannot be assessed if there is only one data point. You must have at least three data points. And so results can still be unreliable despite having repeated experiment multiple times. If the results are different after every repetition, despite repetition, they cannot be reliable. In these cases, if you repeat the experiment multiple times and found yourself producing inconsistent and unreliable results, you need to look at the actual method because very likely you need to revise the method in order to reduce the errors that's affecting your data, which will in turn improve the consistency and the reliability of results. As I already alluded to before, results can be reliable but invalid and inaccurate at the same time. And I can demonstrate using the two examples we've used throughout the video. In the example where we are heating the soft drink can to remove carbon dioxide and water, remember how we said we can achieve consistent mass losses of 45 grams every single time, but what if the 45 grams is due to the loss of both carbon dioxide and water. These results are considered reliable because they're reproducible. They are consistent with one another. But does this mass loss really reflect the loss of carbon dioxide? No, because it also includes loss of water. Therefore, the method is invalid and the results are also invalid and also inaccurate because they do not truly reflect the real loss of carbon dioxide. They overestimate the amount of carbon dioxide in the soft drink. So these results are reliable, but they are considered as invalid and inaccurate. What about the pendulum example? If we use an angle of 50 degrees, which is far bigger than the small angle requirement of 15 degrees, we will produce very invalid and very inaccurate results because the pendulum equation, t equals to two pi times by square root of L over G, this can only be used for small angles less than 15 degrees. If we use a big angle, such as 50 degrees, we can still produce consistent values for period, but these period values will not be accurate and they will not be valid. Now, to finish up the video, let's use the typical target analogy to understand the differences between accuracy and reliability. We can have situations where an experiment produces results of poor accuracy and poor reliability. So none of the red spots are on the target, analogous to the fact that none of the results are close to the true value, so they are inaccurate. And you can see all the red spots are all over the target. They are not consistent. They are missing the target at different places. So they are unreliable and inconsistent. You can have results where the red spots are consistently in the same spot, but they all miss the target in the center. 
So these are highly reliable or good reliability, but they are poor in accuracy. You can have experiments where some of the data points or some of the red spots are hitting the center of the target, suggesting they are accurate, but not all of them do. Some of them are missing the target by a fair margin, so they have poor reliability. They are not very consistent. Finally, the ideal experiment that you want to design is one that produces results which are both high in accuracy, so they're hitting the target, and they are high in reliability, so they're hitting the target all the time. You are consistently producing accurate results. Hey everyone, if you found this video helpful, smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Want even more? Become a Patreon member for early access to videos, exclusive Discord discussions about questions on chemistry and physics, and live preparation sessions for your exams. Don't forget to head over to our website for topic tests and practice exams to further improve your understanding and learning.